There you go, get him. There you go, running. 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 Get him. Get him, get him, get him. Get him, boy. Get him. Uh, he's caught in that tree. Oh, he got him. Get him, boy. Get him. You know what time it is. Welcome back to another episode of Get Him Greg Fishing. I'm Greg Williams, and in today's episode, I'll be fishing for Spanish mackerel off a pier in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Uh, I'm going to show you the rigs that I use as well as how to make these inexpensive rigs to target the Spanish mackerel. I'll also show you the type of equipment I use to target these fish. Stay tuned. Stretching 1,680 feet out into the water, the Spring Made Pier is one of the longest piers along the east coast. The pier not only features great fishing, but also features a restaurant, as well as a tackle shop. There are 10 fishing piers to fish along the Grand Strand, and I chose this pier based upon its 5 minute drive from my house, as well as in 1983 the stake record Spanish mackerel was caught off this pier weighing 11 pounds, which by the way was caught by my uncle Walt Davis, who used to work on the pier during the 70s and the 80s. Spanish mackerel typically show up in good numbers as water temperatures climb up into the 70s in the spring. From April to June, Spanish mackerel begin moving northward out of their wintering grounds. The best time to catch them moving along the Grand Strand is between April and May. With the air temperature in the mid-70s with a light wind, you couldn't have asked for a better day to go fishing. Today we are fishing for Spanish mackerel using a straw rig, which I will show you how to make later in this video. Straw rigs are some of the simplest rigs to make and to fish, but they do take patience. When a school runs through, an angler can catch multiple Spanish mackerel on single cast. Likewise, the time in between schools can seem to drag on. A straw rig consists of six or seven two alt to three alt hooks with a small piece of red straw or white straw slipped over each hook. Most anglers alternate colors and space the hooks out about a foot apart. A four ounce bank sinker is added to the end of the rig. The other end has a swivel that is tied to the main line. Very similar to sabiki rigs, straw rigs are easy to make, but some anglers also purchase mackerel tree rigs which are essentially the same thing, but already tied. Long rods are usually used when fishing these rigs. The angler simply opens the bale and drops the line straight down. Once the sinker hits bottom, they raise the rod tip and then lower it back down, over and over. Most anglers using this technique use a device called a rod rocker, which is a rod holder that pivots up and down instead of staying stationary. Other anglers just use the pier railing, pivoting the rod tip up and down. This makes it easier on the arms, especially during a lull in action when the payoff takes a while. As a young boy, my family used to camp at the small campground located beside the pier called Pebble Beach. Each morning I would scoop sand fleas from the sand and walk them to the pier and ask fishermen if they were interested in buying them. During that time, my uncle Walt, who had mentioned earlier, worked part-time at the bait shop and basically fished the pier the remainder of the week. He had several of his prized catches mounted and on display at the bait shop, including a 125-pound tarpon and the state record Spanish mackerel that he had caught off the end of the pier. Although I am picking the hooks out of the mackerel's mouth by hand, I would strongly suggest using a pair of pliers as these fish have a mouthful of sharp teeth that will slice your hand very easily. Since the air temperature is only in the 70s, there's no need to keep the fish on ice. Simply fill a five gallon bucket with cool water and this will keep the fish in good condition for several hours until you're able to clean it. Since the fish are migrating from the north, be sure to set up and fish on the southern side of the pier in order to maximize your chances of catching a bucket full of fish. Anglers say that fishing is best when the shadow of the pier is underneath it. Although most anglers simply drop their rig straight down and work their pole up and down, I found that tossing your fishing rig out away from the pier about 25 yards and working your rig back to the pier by slowly reeling in your rod while moving your rod tip up and down worked good, 
especially when the pier was casting a shadow out onto the water. To toss your line out, simply lean over the railing, being careful not to fall over, and point your rod tip down. And swing the rig under the pier, then release the rig as it swings back away from the pier. This should give you the distance needed to catch the fish. As of April 19th, 2023, when I taped this video, the South Carolina fishing regulations allowed anglers to keep up to 15 Spanish mackerel as long as they were 12 inches in length from snout to the center of the fork in their tail. Spring Made Pier was originally built in 1953 by Elliot White Springs as part of a beachfront hotel named Spring Made Resort, which served as a getaway designated for mill workers from central and upstate South Carolina. Several months after completion, the pier was destroyed by Hurricane Hazel, which hit the coast as a Category 4 hurricane. The pier was rebuilt only to be destroyed again in 1959, when a fighter pilot ejected himself into the Atlantic Ocean before crashing his plane into the pier. Fourteen years later, in 1973, the pier would be rebuilt again. This time it was erected on the northern boundary of Spring Made Resort's 27-acre property and stretched 1,068 feet into the Atlantic Ocean, making it the longest pier in Myrtle Beach. The pier was damaged during Hurricane Hugo in 1989, but stood for 43 years until it was once again destroyed by Hurricane Matthew on October 8, 2016, leaving only 100 feet of the pier remaining. After four years of planning, construction began in May of 2019. A little over a year later, the pier opened on July 4th of 2020. When fishing for Spanish mackerel, you'll also catch a good many blues. Be sure to keep the blues and freeze them as they make an excellent bait that you can cut up into chunks and use at a later date. Some people eat the blues, but for me, they taste a little too fishy for my taste. When cleaning mackerel, I typically will fillet each side of the fish, removing everything including the skin. I then will cut all the belly meat out as well as the red bloodline that runs down the middle of each fillet. Preparing these fillets this way will ensure a tasty meal later that night. Awesome day fishing here at the Spring Made Pier. Ended up catching the limit and I uh, even had a few blues that I took home today to boot. Uh, until next time, I'll catch you later. All right, in order to make these rigs, all you will need is a pool noodle, which costs about a dollar. Get it at Walmart. Uh, you'll need some straws. You can do any color. I've already pre cut these, they're just red straws that, that I found laying around the house. but. A lot of times people will use red straws and white straws and they'll um, do a red straw, a white straw, a red straw, they'll, they'll you know, go back and forth with them. You also need some uh, two alt, three alt uh, hooks and a pack of bear swivels. And a oh weight, I got a, I've got a pyramid uh, sinker here, so two, two, uh, two ounce. Normally I'll do three ounce, I just grab these, they were, uh, found them easy. So normally three ounce uh, bank weight uh, pyramid sinker will work fine. Um, so let's get to it. First all you have to do is just cut you a uh, little pool noodle. Uh, 
about, about that far, just set it down and then just lay it aside. And what I typically do next, uh, we're gonna use, I, I typically make a six hook setup. So I just put the straws on the hook next, just six of them. Oh, I forgot to mention, I'm also using a 40 pound test line. Uh, forgot that part. So we just put the straws onto the hooks. All right, once I have all the, the um, straws on the hooks, I just simply run the hooks through your 40 pound test line. Just one right after the other. And we're fishing mid-April. Uh, the fish will make their runs from from the south back to the north. So when you own your pier, uh, just make sure that you are on the southern side of the pier. Um, that's the way the fish will be coming. Um, they'll be going from south to north. All I'm doing is just, just putting the hooks all lined up on the line, it's one at a time. Alright, and then the next step we're going to put a loop loop in here and uh, this is going to be where we where we uh, put our sinker. So we're just going to do an overhand loop. We're going to wrap the loop back on itself two times. And we're just going to see that it turns into like a figure eight. You just pull it, clinch it tight, clip off the Excess. I always like leaving, you know, just a little bit of excess off, the excess on it. Um, Cut it off. Now all you simply do at that point is you uh, take your weight, and run it through the eye of the weight, go around it, and then pull up on it. That's what it looks like. Next step, we're just going to go up maybe two foot from. The, where the weight is. We're going to do the same type loop uh, or knot. Uh, we're going to take one of these hooks with a straw on it. We're just going to pull it out just like this. And what we're going to do is make the same, same knot that we did with the sinker. It's just an overhand knot that you just loop on itself two times. Be careful when you clench this down though. I always grab, kind of put my finger in the line like this right here and I'll uh, clench down on it to get the knot clenched like this. So once you got that, um, got your, got it looks like this. So we're going to go up another about 12 inches and we're going to repeat this process for all six of your hooks. All right, the last step, we just pull off maybe another 12 inches or so of the string. Um, you tie on a barrel swivel. I'm using size sevens. Um, I like, some people like bigger ones. I, I kind of like the smaller ones better. On this one, I just tie a clinch knot. Go around six times. Go through the loop and then back in on the loop. Just clinch it down. Cut off the excess. 
All right, now we're gonna go back to the little foam thing that we, the little pool noodle we cut. And what you do is you just take your sinker, put it down the middle, and you start wrapping the line around it. I actually went out on the Spring Made Pier earlier today and they was catching them pretty good out there. Um, I couldn't do any fishing today because I'm having my house worked on. I don't know if you can hear the banging in the background or not, but I'm having my house re-roofed today. So, decided I'd stick around here and, and make these rigs, um, get everything ready, and hopefully tomorrow morning I'll be able to get out there and see if I can't uh, catch some of these uh, Spanish and we'll do a video we'll hopefully we'll do a video on me catching them and, and uh, you'll get an idea so we got all of our all of our um, hooks finally in in here so what you do is just continue wrapping this around when you get to the end where your uh, barrel swivel is just go to the nearest hook and put the hook you know just cinch it down with the hook like this right here what I typically do after I get got this uh, little rig uh, set up, I'll put it in a baggie because I normally have maybe four of these um, just in case you know they break off or something over the course of the day. So uh, once you get this uh, looking like this, just put it in a baggie, put it in your bag, and uh, you're good to go. The another piece of equipment that I use is this. Uh, rod rocker and you'll see in the video uh, where all day long you're just gonna be rocking your uh, rod and reel up and down up and down up and down this just makes it easier uh, for you to, to do it uh, I bought this um, also at uh, Garden City bait and tackle uh, was $36 uh, so We'll, we'll show you how this works uh, later in this video, and uh, so hopefully uh, I'm gonna get everything put back together. Uh, I'm gonna get my tackle together and my rod and reels, and uh, hopefully in the morning we'll uh, get out on the pier and start catching some fish. Before you leave, be sure to check out our description page below. This page gives you a brief description of the video you are currently watching along with the fishing gear we used during the filming of this video. Click onto the Show More link to view all of this information. In upcoming episodes, we'll begin a new segment where we test out products that are sent to us. If you would like your product to be featured on one of our upcoming episodes, our contact and shipping information is also included on this page. I want to thank you for watching our videos, and if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to our channel to get notifications as to when our new videos are available. Meanwhile, here are a few more videos that I think you will like.